Welcome back, watch fans. Got another watch review. Big shock. This is probably going to be an Ingersoll, but I have no idea. But it is in the packaging that I get from the person that I always buy all my Ingersolls from. And why is the box open the way it's supposed to? What kind of nonsense is this? Right, I'm going to have to fast forward this. This is crazy. All right. Here we go. Let's see what it is. I have no idea. I have two others still in the box. But I know it's an Ingersoll. One of my favorite brands. I can't lie. There we go. The true original. All right. Perfect, nice wood box. This is great. All right. Oh, very nice. This is cool. I like this. This is the Trenton, I think. Yes. The Ingersoll Trenton. All right. You know the drill. All right, hope you guys like that video. It's always a favorite of mine. If you guys have watched some of my other videos, you know that I put it on all of them. I'd like to give a little bit of background about the company of every watch that I that I give. Um, so this is very exciting. This is a very nice watch. This is a radio light, but I just noticed something. Can you see what I see? Cloudy face. Yup. Give me a minute. All right, I'm back. No lie, that was a huge pain in the ass. Um, shoot, so this watch, because it's got a curved crystal, is gonna be hard to show to videotape, but I wanna make sure everybody fully sees what I had to go through, because this one was a pain in the ass. So, um, 
as I've talked about in many of my videos, and I think honestly, I've just decided I'm gonna have to do a video on gray market. Now, when you buy watches gray market, you always end up running into situations where you either have a dead battery or the crystal's cloudy. And yes, I will put a video up there for, for cloudy crystals on how I clean it. Um, this one, unfortunately, was a little bit more complicated. So I'll show directly to the right what it looked like before. You probably saw it, and then you can see it here. I'll try and get the glare off. But you can see this is significantly clear. This is a much clearer um, watch crystal. Normally, I wouldn't complain. But this one probably took me about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, it was a pain in the butt. So um, don't get me wrong. This is a very nice watch. And this is not something that is specifically Ingersoll. Somebody asked me about that. It's not... Um, Many, many, many watches run into this issue. Um, it, it, whenever you buy a watch that's uh, that's uh, gray market, it's probably been sitting in storage for for years. And what happens is the oils break down, and uh, it clouds. It accumulates on the crystal, particularly if it is if the watch is being stored in a warehouse that does not have um, is not climate controlled. The uh, so I'm just polishing it. The, the watch, the oils will typically break down and then they adhere to wh wherever uh, the temperature seems to be. Um, I don't know. So like the watch face, uh, rarely see it on the hands or the dial, thankfully, because that's hard. But nevertheless, I had, to, I had to clean it. And I just kind of want people to see this is not a screw down uh, cap. Um, this is supposed to be like the real vintage watch which is a vintage version of, of uh, kind of looks like this, the Radio Light series. By the way, that's a sneak peek. You'll see that video in a week. Um, this one was a snap-on back, and you see how shiny it is. So if you could just make out, there is a slight, there's a slight location where you pop it out. It's a little indentation there. It took me forever to find that. You have to be very careful with these because if you try and open it anywhere else around, you are going to scratch the case and you will never forgive yourself. And while I was in here, I said, I do not want to do this again. So I went ahead and um, also replaced the battery. So it has a brand new battery too. Uh, I have a bunch of these, so I may want to sell this. I'm not sure. God, such a nice watch though. Um, okay, en enough about that. But uh, I greased the seals before I put it back together. So I spent, I spent some time. Um, this is the Ingersoll Trenton Radio Light. Now... This is supposed to be similar to the original radio light, and there is, there are several of these. Um, I just showed you one that I have, um, but I will put a picture right here of what the original radio light looked like, and um, I'll just go into a little bit of detail about that. The very first radio light was issued in 1919. A really nice watch. It was a little bit revolutionary because by that time they had just started using what was called radium. Um, and it was sort of the equivalent to like what we would consider the super luminova. The only problem, of course, is that it was radioactive. And uh, there's the whole story about the radio, the radium girls. And I will talk about that more in a future video that I have scheduled. Um, but it is unfortunate. Uh, they, many of them, Actually, I think they all died of cancer, but uh, don't focus on that. Um, this this watch is a timeless style, and this one truly is more like the representative one uh, with the, the lugs in the back. And it was essentially the first time that they had started putting uh, watches on the wrist. So this was essentially supposed to be like a pocket watch that was on the wrist. Now, this is a reproduction, obviously, an homage to the original, had a sub-second spectacular watch i mean gosh look at this this thing is gorgeous now there's a few things that we can go into i took pictures of the movement too because god forbid i did not want to have to go into this again <laughs> but um uh gosh i really like this watch uh 316 stainless steel and i'll just try and you know i, I know i move around too much when these videos but i really want you guys to get a good look at it what this what this watch entails such a nice watch um, gosh, it is such a nice watch. Stainless Seal 316. Um, it's got the old-fashioned big crown. Uh, it is a quartz watch. Of course, it's not automatic. This one that I have here is an automatic. Um, it has, uh, 
It has a Seiko. Seiko? Yeah. SII movement. We'll go. I'll show that in a few minutes uh, when we do the movement video. Um, it does, in fact, have a sapphire crystal. Um, it, I'm sorry. Three layer sapphire coated, just like some of the others. Very nice crystal. You can kind of see it. Uh, it's it really a spectacular. Um, and it has Horween leather. Now, that, you know, that's great because I am such a fan of, of these, of their leather products. I've got it on a couple um, Ingersoll's, and I know that they're also on some other very high-end watches. Horween Leather, they're one of the oldest manufacturers of uh, leathers. They have been, I guess, the oldest continuous operating tannery uh, since, like, night for over 100 years. I mean, it, it, the date's there in the right quick story about it. But really spectacular. Um, I'll just go a little bit more into the detail. Let me get this thing off. Oh, man, this thing is really tight on here. All right. So Ingersoll, of course, big fan of their own name. It's on the it's on the dial. It's uh, on the back. Very nice case back. Love this case back. It's on the strap. It's on the lug. It's everywhere. Um, what else can I say about this? The Trenton. The MSRP for this watch, now it is a quartz, but it is a very nice quartz. Uh, I believe it's $395. I'll correct it at the bottom if I'm not correct, but I think $395, a very good deal for this watch. Uh, before I go into any more specifics on the watch, let's go ahead and watch the movement video so you can get a little bit better understanding of, uh, of, of what's in this beautiful watch. Thank you. The Ingersoll Trenton uses the VD78A movement by SII. Founded in 1937, SII is the member of the Seiko Group and stands for Seiko Instruments Incorporated. SII specializes in the manufacture of watches and leverages its core competency to create high-precision watches and movements that are utilized by watch manufacturers all over the world. As a well-known quality movement manufacturer, Seiko Watch Corporation cooperates closely with watch producers in the planning and sales to ensure their movements are well represented. The VD78A is a two-hand standardized watch movement with a small sub-second at the six o'clock location. The movement utilizes a two-pole stepping motor with electronic circuit reset. Although there are zero joules in this movement, it is considered a high quality, high value movement. The VD78A uses the 377 silver oxide battery and supports a hacking feature for extended battery life. VD78A's typical battery life is estimated at approximately three years and up to eight years with the hacking feature engaged. Accuracy of the movement is quite good, maintaining plus or minus 20 seconds per month at normal operating ambient temperature range. This movement may be sold by additional watch manufacturers, which include Hattori and Epson. The non-SII branded movements are assembled using Seiko parts by their respective companies. All right. So I just realized I completely forgot to talk about these other things. So let's put this down here for a minute. Uh, I didn't even talk about the box. You know, I go, I, I, I sort of talk about it in all my other videos, so I kind of forget. It's a solid wood box. They really are spectacular. Um, usual things you get this well, I don't know that this is usual but you get this really nice sol solid plate sort of a paperweight um, just kind of uh, to, to tell you how how significant they think that their authenticity is and I think it is a really nice thing I really am a big fan of this watch um, nice instruction booklet covers every single watch every single movement is very comprehensive I am definitely not complaining in multiple languages as of 2016 all Ingersolls have a full lifetime warranty. Uh, of course, if you got a gray market, um, it's harder to get that done. But um, at least if you buy from me, <laughs> if I'm selling, I I make sure that I service them all, like like you saw before I before I put them up for sale. But um, generally, Ingersoll will, if there's actual defects, they will in fact honor the warranty. Um, let's go ahead and measure this because I want to get a good feel for what the size is. Well, this looks to me like maybe a 44 millimeter case, maybe 46. 44 millimeter, I'm right. Lug is 
No, let's not. Let's see. That's that's a 20. 20 millimeter lug, and let's check the depth. Okay, it's about about 14 and a half. We'll say 14 and a half depth. Uh, great watch. You know what? I want to just go straight into the loom because it looks so cool, and I bet you it's going to be awesome. Oh, look at that. That is fantastic. That is true to the radium that this, that this watch honored. All right, what else can I say about this? Fantastic black look. I mean, this is such a vintage style. This is a great, great watch. Um, gosh, I may just have to keep this one. I know I got another watch that's pretty similar, but this watch is so fantastic. I may have to keep it. Gosh, I can't keep keeping all these watches. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Ah. <laughs> all right. Um, water resistance. It is a 5 atmosphere, 50 meter, 5 bar if you're in Canada and Europe. Uh, 50 meter water resistance. I'll put a chart right up there. Uh, I believe that means you can do some light swimming. You cannot go snorkeling with it, but you can swim in the pool if you so desire to ruin your Horween leather strap. Um, you can wash dishes, you can play in the rain, jump in muddy puddles for you British uh, friends of mine here. Uh, and you can shower with it also. Of course, I don't know why it would that this is a leather. But hey, if you're in a party and somebody pushes you into the pool, there you go. Um, but again, excellent watch. Uh, let me see. I believe it has a hacking feature. It sure does. So what's nice is... When you're storing this, you can keep it hacked, um, and that just disables the second hand. And what I will say is that typically these movements will last three years with it engaged, but they will often last as much as 10 years with it pulled out. And believe me for this one, you do not want to have to pop this out again. I had to be very careful. Uh, I used a press and a very fine uh, flat blade screwdriver with a a watch hammer to just try and pop it loose because you can't typically use these because you will scratch the hell out of your watch and it's not something I want to do with this beauty. All right, um, that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you have any questions um, and I'm also interested in any comments that you may have, please leave them below. Uh, please also subscribe. I really appreciate it. This I do not make any money from these videos. But I do certainly appreciate your patronage, and um, when I get people watching it, it makes it worthwhile to me, because otherwise I'm really just talking to myself in this room. So thank you very much. I appreciate it.